Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day. When you come to a congregation, you obviously gather to come and meet your new congregation. It is sometimes with trepidation. And then when you get to know many of them, you find that they are full of wonderful life stories and journeys that they've shared in. And you as a minister become very privileged to become part of that story. So it is with Alexander James Gibson Sandy. As we came, as I got to know him and the life of this church, I got to know a very warm and wonderful man with a tremendous sense of humour. I got to know someone who was very intelligent and on the ball. I got to know someone who I admired. I also saw the reality of the difficulties he endured in latter years. But also I knew the love that sustained him, particularly through his family, and especially with Elsa, with whom he had shared some 62 years of married life. Indeed, one of the most joyous events of the last few years, especially during COVID, was the ability to share with Sandy and Elsa on their 60th wedding anniversary, outside in their garden, it was outside. It was COVID times. As we had a chance to share in celebration, not the celebration they'd wanted, but the celebration that was forced because of COVID. But it didn't diminish Sandy's joy. It didn't diminish his sense of wonder. So we gather here to give thanks for his life today, to commend him to God's eternal rest and peace, to mourn his passing, to share our sense of grief, and also to share our sense of love. These words, I came across the internet a few a wee while ago. I have been unable to attribute them to any author, but these words were written about the reality of grief, and the author gives great insight by writing thus grief never ends but it changes grief is a passageway it's not a place to stay grief is not a sign of weakness nor is grief a lack of faith but grief is the price of love that's what we do here today we pay the price of love when sandy passed away on the 29th of december we mourn his passing. Today we come to pay that price of sharing in the love that his journey has brought into ours. But we thank God we have that price to pay because it means our lives have been part of Sandy's journey and he part of ours. So let us come before God in our worship and in our praise. His faith was always important to him as was the music associated with his faith. We come to give praise to God as we sing together the wonderful hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. It is our tradition that we stand as we sing. Please do so if you feel able to do so. If you do not feel able, please remain seated.
praise be to the Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy by the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the dead. So he gave to us a new birth into a living hope. Let us take a moment to come before God in prayer. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you are the Lord of life and the conqueror of death. You are our help in every time of trouble. In the presence of death, you offer comfort to those who mourn. Loving God, we bow before you now, believing that you bear the reality of our grief and share our sense of loss. Give us grace to worship you and to trust in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O oh Lord, that because Christ lives, we shall live also. As we gather here this day, we come to pay the price of love. We come to share our sense of loss. We come to mourn. We come to give thanks for Sandy's life and journey. We gather to remember him as we have known and shared in the journey of his life. We remember him as a loving and devoted husband, father, father-in-law, grandfather, brother, brother-in-law, uncle. We remember him as a devoted elder. We remember him in the pastimes and hobbies he enjoyed. We remember him at peace, particularly on the water in a boat. We remember him, Lord, for his working environment and the gifts that he brought to all that he did. We remember him. We remember and bring to you today our own memories of Sunday, the times that we've shared in his journey, the times that we remember today. And we mourn. We feel that sense of loss so deeply. But we also give praise that he is now indeed at rest, at peace in your eternal kingdom, embraced by the loving God, embraced as a loyal servant. <coughs> loving God, in our pain, we remember with sorrow how we have failed one another and brought grief to your heart. In your kindness, forgive our past sins. Set us free from guilt and make us strong to live our lives in love. God of grace and power, send your Holy Spirit among us that we may hear your promises and know them to be true and so receive the comfort and peace they bring. This we ask in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us turn to read from God's word. First of all, we turn from the word to the words of the Old Testament to the book of Ecclesiastes, a book written by a philosopher who's trying to understand the meaning of life. And in his musings, he comes to some wonderful understandings about our life with one another and our life with God. He brings home to us a lot of the difficulties that we we know still to this day in life. But also in chapter 3, I think he gives us one of the best understandings of what life is as different times coming together, different times of Sandy's life. If you can imagine a blank canvas and someone putting together a tapestry, each needle point, each thread is important to the picture, but you need all the threads intertwined together to create the whole. And we are the different threads, the different strands of Sandy's life as we gather here today. Each one of us has our own story of Sandy, part of that tapestry of his life. And so we hear these words from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything its season and for every activity under heaven its time, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace 
and a time to abstain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time for silence and a time for speech, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything to suit its time. As I was thinking of the service here this morning, it struck me particularly the one thing that, one of the things that Sandy really appreciated was the view from the house in Golf and Tower Drive. And also the pleasure he got from being on the water, sailing, particularly in this area, an area he knew so well as he saw the scenery round about him. So it seems entirely appropriate that we turn to the words of the psalmist and read from Psalm 121. The psalmist writes, If I lift up my eyes to the hills, where shall I find help? My help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot stumble. He who guards you will not sleep. The guardian of Israel never slumbers and never sleeps. The Lord is your guardian, your protector at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard you as you come and go, now and forevermore. For Sandy, these weren't just words. That was the very real basis of his faith and part of his DNA of who he was. And finally, we turn to the Gospels to hear these words of comfort given to us by Jesus in John's Gospel. We read from John chapter 14. Jesus said, set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwelling places in my Father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you. For I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, so I shall come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way I am taking. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, said Jesus. No one comes to the Father except by me. Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled hearts at rest and banish all your fears. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word. The reality of a life lived and shared is measured in so many different ways. And for us today, it is the reality of the stories and memories that we have of Sandy's life. We will go on to think about his journey in a moment. But for, before we do so, we turn once more to sing to God's glory. The great BB hymn as it is known, but also one that reminds us of the importance of the sea and this wave, the seafaring tradition in this area. And also the power of the sea as well. As we sing together, will your anchor hold in the storms of life?
what is always important to me when we celebrate someone's life is that the words of the family come through and are heard. And so today we hear from one of Sandy's family. Um, Jennifer is going to share with us now some words in tribute to her dad. I invite her to come forward and share these words on behalf of the family. <coughs> Hi everyone. I would like to say a few words today about my dad on behalf of myself and our family and my brothers and sister, Fraser, Andrew and Katrina. We all feel very privileged to have been brought up by such fantastic parents here in, Gura in Greenock. They lovingly supported and encouraged us throughout our lives and we are all very grateful and thankful for that. We have many happy memories of dad from our childhood and I would like to share some of these with you today. <coughs> Dad loved to tell stories. When we were little, he would read us bedtime stories, enthusiastically making up voices for all the different characters. Years later, he took great joy in doing the same for his grandchildren. He had complete faith in all of our ability to achieve what he asked of us. From helping him win yacht races to reaching the top of various Munros and family hill walks. <coughs> Occasionally though, his faith in our ability was a little optimistic. At dinner with Katrina's French exchange family, who didn't speak any English, he was keen to do some of his trademark storytelling, this time about the history of Scots-French relations from the Old Alliance, including Joan of Arc and Mary Queen of Scots, through to the present day. His French, however, was quite rusty, so we asked Katrina, at age 14, to translate using her high school French. Let's just say, much of the detail was lost in translation, but there was plenty of laughter along the way. Dad taught us many things, to sail, to swim, to hill walk, to fish, to share his passions and help us develop hobbies and skills of our own. Sometimes it must have been hard though. <clears throat> I am not particularly blessed with any musical ability, as those of you who know me will know. But at school we were encouraged to learn an instrument, and for some reason I picked the violin. Dad used to try to help me with music practice week after week, playing the correct notes on the piano until I managed to scrape them out in the violin. It must have been torture for him, but he patiently persevered. Dad taught us all to swim. When we were younger, what is now called wild swimming and requires a wetsuit and a safety plan was what we did every year in the summer, sometimes here in Gurick or at Lunderson Bay or Largs and always in our summer holidays, <coughs> which were often in Scotland, at St Andrews or at similar seaside resorts around the UK. The water was always absolutely freezing and you had to walk over the stony beach in your bare feet till you got to the water. Then you would pull your feet up as quickly as you could in case you trod on any fish or seaweed underfoot, underfoot and swim like mad to keep warm. When we turned blue with cold, we came back up, up the stony beach and were wrapped in a towel and fed tomato soup from a flask till we stopped shivering. <clears throat> Dad must have been colder than any of us as he was always there, close by, making sure we were okay and pulling us out when we got too cold. Dad also took us out sailing from a young age and taught us how to row and sail dinghies and yachts. I remember one time Dad had restored a lovely wooden rowing boat and we took it down to Cardo Bay to try it out. It started taking in water and Dad was telling me it just needs to take up and it'll be fine as we slowly sank in the none too clean water at Cardo Bay. <coughs> we had to wade back to shore, pulling it behind us for a small running repair, as he put it. A love of the sea and many, many fond memories of sailing with Dad and occasion, even occasionally winning the odd race is something that has stayed with Fraser and I to this day. In later years, when Mum and Dad spent time with Andrew and his family in New Zealand, Andrew took him night fishing with friends on many occasions. He would be up all night catching red snapper, and in his 80s, he still had more stamina than some of his shipmates who would go to sleep in the cabin and wake up at sunrise to find Dad still standing there, fishing rod in hand with a bucket full of fish. He made many friends in New Zealand and will be sorely missed there too. <clears throat> I am very grateful to have been able to share a few of our happy memories with you today. We are all truly blessed to have had Dad in our lives and I would like to thank you all for coming here today 
to join our family in celebrating his long and happy life. You've got to admire his optimism for a running repair when you're sinking in Cardwell Bay. We come to remember and give thanks for Sandy's journey as we've heard in some of the stories from Jennifer here. But we think of his journey that brought him so many places and finally here to Guruk. Sandy was born 11 September 1937 in Glasgow. It turned out he was the eldest of, of two sons, his brother Norman. His dad was Alexander and his mum Margaret and he attended Jordan Hill College School. After leaving school, he went out to study at Stowe College, studying civil engineering. As he was a student, he was given deferment on national service. However, Sandy, being Sandy, wanted to make sure that he did his bit as well. And so he joined the Territorial Parachute Regiment. I understand he did his first jump with great gusto. Better him than me. He was a member of the Territorial Parachute Regiment for a number of years. He then did an apprentice civil engineering at Glasgow City Council before moving to Argyll County Council and then to become assistant borough surveyor for Largs before then moving to Bales Den. He worked in the Kilkenzie Power Station with Kennedy and Duncan and then Rankins of Dunoon for major road upgrading projects struck her to the rest and be thankful being one of them that road that still causes so many problems and that he had such an into, input to it indeed i remember discussing it with sandy a few years after the last road slip and that his thoughts were quite clear as to what should be done they also engaged in the upgrade upgrade of the noon high street he then became deputy borough surveyor in port glasgow and oversaw part of what was becoming the new AAM8 road in this area. At the reality of regionalisation, he found himself working within the context of Strathclyde region, working first of all in the Glasgow office and then the Dumbarton office before retiring in his late 50s. He had a full and active working life, bringing together his skills and his gifts in, in the field of civil engineering, gifts that never left him, gifts that he also employed here in the church as well. Sandy and Elsa met via one of Sandy's close friends who at that time was going out with a girl in Dunoon. Sandy was brought along to be partner to, um, to the, his, the, his friend's girlfriend's best friend. Are you following this? <laughs> yes. And that best friend turned out to be Elsa. And from that meeting, the rela their relationship blossomed. We won't comment on the other relationship about the best friends. And so from that time, Sandy and Elsa got together. And from that meeting, the romance that blossomed led to them being married on the 21st of May 1960 at Dunoon St. Cuthbert's Parish Church. And then, of course, in their journey together, they were blessed with their family, Jennifer, Fraser, Andrew and Katrina. They celebrated their platinum wedding in 2020 during the lockdown and shared together some 62 years of married life. Always there for each other in the ups and downs of life. I remember especially meeting with Sandy when Elsa was herself incapacitated in hospital. His worry clear, but also his sense of commitment and love. Sandy remained a member of the Institute of Civil Engineering and also a member of the same body for structural engineers. He played rugby for Jordan Hill Rugby Club, but as we've heard, sailing was one of his major pastimes. It was important to him and he enjoyed it greatly and he was good at it. He was a member of the Holy Loch Sailing Club, Cardwell Bay Sailing Club and the Royal Glue Yacht Club. That's a lot of sailing. He also enjoyed racing yachts and dinghies and got involved in passing on his skills to others. He taught cadets and adults how to cheer in the joy of sailing. He was, well, let's put it, he was not a wee bit. He was very competitive. 
He liked to win and he raced to win, but he enjoyed it. He was vice commodore at the yacht club and enjoyed whenever he could taking the children out on his experiences. I particularly love the story of hearing that he kept a plastic sheet in his car so if any of the children fell out, fell into the water, they could still be transported home without doing any damage to the upholstery in the car. That was just Sandy covering every eventuality, thinking through what might happen. His faith was evident through his work within the congregations that he shared in. He was ordained as an elder in Curran St Andrews in 1969, before then becoming an elder in Ashton Parish Church, subsequently in Old Gurukh and Ashton, and he was presented with his 50th anniversary, his 50th year of service as an elder in 2010. He also taught in the Bible class, amongst other things. There were also the great family times when he enjoyed being out and about with the family, particularly in the caravan. He was a member of the caravan club, and there's a lot of caravanning with the family all over Scotland and many parts of the UK, including especially Weymouth, which was a favourite, as well as to Europe, and going perhaps further afield with the caravan than many others would think of, to Switzerland, Austria, among, and France, to name but a few. He loved nothing better than his hill walking and going up and down the Monroes, but he took it a bit further as well because he also liked keeping his mind active as well, and so there were the evening classes in art and friends and French. In many ways, Sandy always had a passion for France. He was a bit of a Francophile, but he also maintained that outdoor passion. He loved nothing better when he was younger, camping with his brother and the family, taking the family up to camp in Glencoe or fishing off the boat. And of course, the trips to New Zealand to see Andrew and the family were so important to him. He loved his music and was a member of the Greenock Male Voice Choir. He also played piano and loved his music dearly, particularly classical and jazz. Cleo Lane was one of his, one of his favourites. Due to his work and his working life, Elsa and Sandy moved around quite a few places, starting in Balahulish before moving to Largs and Bales Den, and then moving to Hunter's Key where they actually built their own house. And of course, to Guruk for the last number of years with that excellent view that they had from their house. But he also wanted a house with a big garden. And boy, that's what he got. Not just a garden, but a Monroe at the back of it. So even better. And to Sandy, it wasn't just a garden. It became a project where he could lay down paths and create things in, that, in the garden which was so important to him, and he still took great pride in it, in all that he'd done with it. Sandy was always optimistic and up for a challenge. He was engaged in things and was engaging to others. He always gave 100% to everything he started. However, he wasn't the best finisher of things that he started. Things might not necessarily be brought to a full conclusion. He always maintained a good sense of humour. That storytelling that we heard about came through in so many ways. He had a very dry sense of humour, which I related to very much. He also loved to tell jokes and tell stories, which were greatly appreciated. He was a man who appreciated, too, his Scottish heritage. He loved nothing better than to attend a Burns supper and to share some of the Burns songs that he knew and loved so dearly. As we have heard, he encouraged his family to be the best they could be, to try and teach and be the best they could do in all, all the different fields. He also, as we've heard, taught them to swim, but he also taught them to drive. However, that process of teaching them to drive was not fully a positive experience for the young people or for Sandy either. But he was always proud of the family, always wanting to tell you what they were doing, and share what they were up to. He was loving and he was loved. And he was always there for the family, no matter what was going on. Sandy was always fit and active. He was very fond of his food and was himself a good cook. 
he could bake a very good loaf. But the last four years have not been good for Sandy. He has been going downhill and deteriorated rapidly. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2019. And he eventually had to go into Glenfield in April 2022. He had been in and out of hospital, but died in Glenfield on the 29th of December. I know that Elsa and the family would like to say a huge thank you to the staff at Glenfield and to all who dealt with Sandy in the hospitals and for the hospice volunteers who made sure he got to appointments at so many different places. These times and these times shared were greatly appreciate, appreciated by the family. And so we come together today to remember Sandy as we've known him and as we've loved him. I have my, I have my memories of him as you will have your own too. But we come to remember especially the family who are the very centre of his being. We come to remember Elsa from that meeting in Dunoon as, a, as an add-on to a foursome to the whole of their married life together and all that they've been blessed with and shared in. To the family he was blessed with, with Jennifer and Giovanni, Katrina and Stuart, Fraser and Elizabeth, and of course, Andrew and Annette in New Zealand. For the grandchildren, Alistair and Finlay, Callum and Ailey, Sophie, Lucy, Cara and Lucas. And of course, for his brother Norman and Margaret and his niece Catherine and nephew David. We remember them as a family today. We name them before God and ask God's blessing and peace to be upon them. We come to share now in our time of prayer. And in our prayers, we have a moment of silence in that silence, I would ask you to remember Sandy as you knew and loved him. And also we bring before God the family and ask God peace to be in their hearts. We pay the price of love. We pay that price in the soreness of loss. But we pay that price with thanksgiving too. Because our lives have been blessed by knowing and sharing in Sandy's journey. Let us pray. God of all grace, we thank you for the you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to break the power of death and to bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. He shared our life and took upon himself our death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Lord, look not on us, but on us as found in Christ Jesus our Lord and bring us safely to the judgment, to the joy and peace of your eternal presence. Holy and loving God, you hold our souls in life and we praise you for those who have shared this earthly life with us and have entered into eternal life with you now. Here today we come to thank you for the life of our brother, Alexander James Gibson. We thank you for all that made Sandy special to each one of us gathered here today and many others. We thank you for all that you gave Sandy in his journey and accomplished in his story. We come to thank you for all that Sandy meant to those who knew him and loved him. We come to remember him, O oh Lord, in all the different aspects and times of his life. We think of him as a young man and a student. We think of him serving in the territorial parachute regiment. We think of him employing his skills as a civil engineer. The number of projects that have enhanced the lives of so many people. We think of him, Lord, in all these different ways. We remember him especially through his life of faith. The faith lived and the experience, the faith shared for his service as an elder to your church, O oh Lord. We remember him, Father, especially for his humour and joy, for his intelligence, for his engaging personality and his storytelling ability. We remember him especially, God, in the very centre of his family's life as a loving and devoted husband and father and father-in-law and grandfather and brother and brother-in-law and uncle and so much more. We thank you, Lord, for all these things. We thank you for all the memories that we have of Sandy's journey that we've been blessed with. In a moment of silence, Lord, we remember together 
as we think of Sandy now, as we remember, so we commend him to your rest and peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we thank you that for Sandy all pain and suffering are ended and that death itself is conquered. Help us to release Sandy into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment with you in the joy of your everlasting kingdom. We thank you especially for those who are there for Sandy in difficult times. The staff at the hospitals he dealt with and the staff at Glenfield in these difficult days. And we remember them before you, O Lord. Now we come to commend to you those who will miss Sandy most of all in the days to come because of that love they knew and shared in his life. We bring his family before you, Lord, and name them to you. We ask your love and peace to be upon them and within them. Bless Elsa today. Be with her in all that lies ahead. May she know your strength and peace, we pray. We remember Jennifer and Giovanni, Katrina and Stuart, Fraser and Elizabeth, Andrew and Annette. We ask your love to be in their hearts. We commend them to you, O Lord, and ask your peace to be with them. We remember all his grandchildren. We ask you to be with each one of them in the continuing journey that is theirs. That in that journey they may know that legacy of love that is Sandy's gift to them in the stories of their life that he will always be an indelible part of that journey. We pray for his brother Norman and Margaret today. We remember all other members of the close family. We ask your peace to be in their hearts also. May they cast every care on you and know the consolation, strength and peace of your love, O oh God. Hear us, Father, as we bring the family before you now and remember them in prayer. God of all comfort, in the midst of our pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star. Father, awaken us as spirits of mercy, that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them the comforts we receive from you and bring us at the last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory where death itself is ended and where every tear is wiped from every eye. In your name, O God. Amen. <coughs> Sandy expressed a, a love, a, a, a like of a poem that was written by Alfred Lord Tennyson it's called Crossing the Bar. I'd like to invite Fraser to come forward to share these words with us now. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam. And that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our bourne of time and place, the floods may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Thank you. We give thanks that for Sandy, the bar has indeed be, pa has indeed be passed and he is indeed now in the hands of the great pilot that he knew and served so ably in his life. 
on Elsa's behalf. Can I thank you all for being here today, knowing that you thought so much of Sandy that you were willing to give the most important thing you have, some of your time to be here with him today, will indeed be a comfort and strength in all that lies ahead. So on the family's behalf, I extend to you a very sincere thanks indeed. The family will be going from here to the crematorium for a short service of committal, but they'd like to invite you to go back to the Royal Guru Yacht Club. So please do go down and wait for the family there. They'll be delighted to meet with you later after the service of committal. So please do take the opportunity to go back to the Yacht Club. Indeed, when you do go back, the most important words become, do you remember when, as you share your stories and your times of Sandy's journey and Sandy's life. There will also be a retiring offering available at all doors today, and the money raised will be given in Sandy's memory to Glenfield, where he was cared for in his latter days. So please do support that as you leave today. But on Elsa, on the family's behalf, I thank you most sincerely for your presence. I thought I'd finish, before we sing our final hymn, with these words that Elsa wrote. He is already very much missed by Elsa and the family and his friends. He had a long life, well lived, and had a peaceful end. For this, we give thanks to God. We do indeed. We close our service today by singing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land to the tune of Qumranda. We sing today. Please to remain upstanding.